Well, good morning, Beaver Dam. <clears throat> it is Pastor Owen coming to you live from Beaver Dam and Rousey's Chapel, and you're joining us for our time of reflections. This is the time where we gather Monday through Thursday to read some scripture together, to spend some time in prayer with the scripture, and then to uh, hear some some uh, writings from a daily devotional book that we're using. And uh, if you happen to be joining us live like Dick and Nancy are this morning or throughout the day, I invite you to drop us a line there in the comment box. It's a great way so that we can stay connected. <coughs> Excuse me, I can tell spring is in the air. Oh, my allergies are, are acting up a little bit this morning. So I uh, uh, let's see. Let's go ahead and, and delve into some scripture this morning. Our text for, uh, for this morning comes from Paul's letter to the Corinthians. This is 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verses three through six. So uh, let's see where the, where the scripture takes us this morning. And I'm reading from the Common English Bible. Although we live in the world, we don't fight our battles with human methods. Our weapons that we fight with aren't human, but instead are powered by God for the destruction of fortresses they destroy arguments and every defense that is raised up to oppose the knowledge of God. They capture every thought and make it obedient to Christ. Once your obedience is complete, we are ready to punish any disobedience. <clears throat> Friends, that is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, good morning, Mom. Glad to see you're joining us this morning. So uh, our, our focus verse this morning um, is verse 5 out of the text. And uh, let's, let's uh, spend some time in prayer with the text and, and see, if, uh, see if anything jumps out to us. See if anything uh, sparks a question or raises, raises uh, a new awareness of the text. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Take a couple of deep breaths and try to clear our scattered senses. Let us put away those to-do lists that are forming in our minds and try to focus on the presence of God. Second Corinthians chapter 10 verse 5 from the King James Version. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bring it into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. From the New Revised Standard Version. And every proud obstacle raised up against the knowledge of God, and we take every thought captive to obey Christ.
from the common English version. And every defense that is raised up to oppose the knowledge of God, they capture every thought and make it obedient to Christ. And from the New Living Translation, we destroy every proud obstacle that keeps people from knowing God. We capture their rebellious thoughts and teach them to obey Christ. And from the message translation, we use our powerful God tools for smashing, smashing warped philosophies, tearing down barriers erected against the truth of God, fitting every loose thought and emotion and impulse into the structure of a life shaped by Christ. Amen. Amen. So we're continuing to use our uh, daily devotion book. And uh, the one for today is entitled, A Desperate Necessity. Let's hear what Wesley has to say this morning. An accurate view of the nature of repentance and faith in believers <clears throat> is needed in order to avoid the mischief of opinion that we have no need for further change. For they that are whole need not a physician. If we think we are quite made whole already, there is no room to seek further healing. On the contrary, a deep conviction that we are not yet whole constrains us to groan for full deliverance to God that is mighty to save to implore that God will break off the yoke of the inbred sin and fully set my spirit free. I cannot rest till pure within, till I'm wholly lost in thee. That little section in the book is italicized, so I'm not sure if it comes from a psalm or from uh, one of the hymns that, that Wesley and Charles used to sing. Not sure there. But uh, back to our text. An accurate view of this repentance and this faith, coupled with the deep conviction of our demerit and our guilt, is absolutely necessary in order to our seeing the true value of the atoning blood. We need such in order to sense 
that we need this much after we are justified as we did before. To know that he ever lives above for us to intercede, his all atoning love, his precious blood to plead. Lastly, an accurate view of repentance and faith of believers brings a deep conviction to our utter helplessness to retain everything that we have received, by which we are brought in to magnify God so that every temper, every thought, every word and work is brought to obedience, to the obedience of Christ. So that's our, our readings for today. You know, there are some mornings when I'm starting to prepare for our time together where um, I'm just not getting the point. I'm not getting the point of the text that uh, that Paul that uh, Wesley was writing from. Um, I'm not really understanding fully the um, the devotion, the piece from Wesley's sermons, and this was one of those mornings. Um, I just um, I struggled this morning, and so what i did when i started to struggle is i started to look at the particular text from different translations and i think one that that sort of helped um a little bit was the translate the the translation of the second corinthians pa passage from the new living translation and i want to share this with you because i don't know whether it'll help clarify what's what what uh what Wesley was getting at here or not, and what Paul was getting at. Um, so this is the, the New Living Translation for uh, verses three, six, 3 through 6. We are human, but we don't wage wars as humans do. We use God, God's mighty weapons, not worldly weapons, to knock down the strongholds of human reasoning and to, just, and to destroy false arguments. We destroy every proud obstacle that keeps people from knowing God. We capture their rebellious thoughts and teach them to obey Christ. After and after you have become fully obedient, we will punish everyone who remains disobedient. So why the, the reason this text really spoke to me, this particular translation, because it, it spoke to me in a way that, um, that we as Christians um, don't live in the, we don't, we don't necessarily live into the culture that is around us, that we see that there are higher motives and a higher calling to what we're supposed to be as brothers and sisters, that we're supposed to love each other, that we're supposed to take care of each other, and that we should have empathy and care for those around us. That greed is not something that should be coveted. That uh, material possessions don't bring you happiness and joy. And I do believe that using the, the, the weapons of God, I guess as you would put it, the Holy Scriptures, would be a way for us to stay the course and to, to bring to light for others what God truly desires, what our Creator desires. So I think that's kind of what they were, what 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 uh, Paul was writing about here, and what Wesley was writing about in in uh, in his text is that um, when we live in the ways of the scriptural teachings, and when we expose others to the teachings that Jesus gave us that uh, that God provides for us and we show people the immensity of God's love um, that those those weapons per se would destroy the false arguments of what the world tells us we need now the piece that I really struggled with in the text is at the end of of uh, verse 6 verse 6 reads and after you have become fully obedient we will punish everyone who remains disobedient we will punish everyone who remains disobedient. 
I struggle with that because I, I don't know if that is really in keeping with what, um, with Christ's commandment that he gave us, the second commandment. You know, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul, and love your neighbor as yourself. If we're punishing everyone who is disobedient, aren't we kind of going against that, that little piece of advice from Paul? Perhaps. I think that's something I need to, uh, I might need to delve into a little deeper and think about it a little more. So anyway, those are my thoughts on this text. I would love to hear what you were, what you were hearing this morning and what your thoughts are. Um, I see Dick agrees with my comments, so I, I appreciate that, Dick. Um, you know, sometimes, sometimes we struggle and we've got to look a little deeper at times. But anyway, um, it looks like it's going to be a beautiful day. It's a little cooler this morning, but the sun is shining and you can definitely tell that spring is in the air. There must be a, a level of pollen increasing because my, uh, my allergies are kicking in. So uh, we'll get ready for this spring since this is the first day of spring and we should be happy and rejoicing in, the, in that. So let's, uh, let's close with a word of prayer. Let us pray. Gracious and Heavenly Father, wow, we come to you today full of thanksgiving and full of celebration in our heart. Celebration for the warmer temperatures, celebration for the friends that are around us, and celebration for knowing that, um, knowing that you are our God. And as such, we know that all good things come from you. And we also know that when times of trouble come, it's to you that we can lean into and to look for for support. God, we know that we are doing well, most of us, and but we also know that, that there are some who are struggling. They're struggling with either physical issues or maybe some, some internal struggles and maybe some uh, financial struggles and job struggles and just struggles of doing life. Lord, it's in these times that we need to, to be reminded to turn to you and to focus our, our desires on, on your will and have the patience and the courage to accept what your will is. Lord, we also ask that you, that you wrap us in love, that you help us to remember of your presence and give us peace. Give us that peace that surpasses all understanding. And Lord, you know what we need. And we know that you will give us exactly what we need when we need it. Lord, help us to remember all of that. And help us to just walk closer to you, learning and growing in our sanctification with you. Lord, we ask for all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, friends, remember that this is a day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Go in peace, y'all. Bye for now.